Hi, I'm M. And my name is B. And this is Fan Girls Anonymous. Anonymous. A quick warning: this podcast is not for kids. We get into some pretty explicit stuff. But if you're still with us and into that, welcome. B. <laughs> Hello, M. Hi. How are you doing? It is fairly good right now. I have thought good. about it. I have considered all the options and I've decided that it is fairly good. It's fairly good for me too. I'm still a little bit overwhelmed because you know moving to a big city and getting mm-hmm. your, getting a, a big old big girl job. It's a it's a thing. But uh, this podcast keeps me sane. So <laughs> I'm really excited to get going on it again. Uh, episode 2 season 3. <laughs> So fun. <laughs> mm-hmm. And we're going to be talking about something today that's a little bit... You, If you're into fandom and mm-hmm. read fic, it's not something you would even maybe even consider talking about in detail mm-hmm. like we're about to. <laughs> yeah, it, if you are well and deeply entrenched in fandom, this may not be super interesting to you because you're going to go, oh, well, of course it's like that. Uh Sort of like our our fandom definitions episode, this one's aimed a little bit more at people who maybe don't know as much or just getting into it, Mm because it can be confusing, um, as weird as that sounds. It can Uh, be, but I will say that it is something that maybe if you are deep into fandom, you'll be like, that's what I do, (laughs) or that's how I feel. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think it's always nice to hear about people talking about things that I, too, have felt. Mm-hmm. It's comforting to me. Yeah. So we yeah. are talking about, and I have made up this title. I hope you all enjoy it. I'm going to call it the life cycle of a fic. Um, sort of from where it comes from to what happens to it. Because, like I said, as weird as it sounds, as someone new in fandom, you're like, well, it exists, obviously, and somebody created it. But the actual yeah. process of getting from A to B is a little bit nebulous a lot of times, I think. I mean, at least for me for a long time, I didn't even really understand why you needed like an account for AO3. I was like, but you can read everything you want right here. Um, (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yeah, it's it's a lot and we're going to get into it. Uh, We have a lot of notes, but before we get into it, podcast homework. Um, If you want to review us on apple you can uh i actually don't know if i have reviewed one podcast before and it's pretty easy process yes it is a pretty easy process i i uh reviewed the try guys (laughs) the try guys um podcast before um and uh yeah that exists and then also uh fit club is still a thing if you need all of the links that is actually going to be in the show notes of every episode before we get into that fit club episode um bunch of five plus ones super fun then we also have a podcast patreon if you want to support us monetarily you can if you don't Listening is great and enjoying our stuff is great and that's okay. But if you have some money to spare um, and you want to support us, it's there for you. Anyway, the book is shut. Uh, (laughs) (laughs) Podcast homework done. Now we're going to get into the life cycle of fic. Mm -hmm. Um, I feel like we're kind of like getting into like eighth grade or seventh grade like frog cycle (laughs) <laughs> yes you should Stuff. keep that in your mind at all times you should have the little cycle of life for a frog um, that's exactly how thick works you start as a frog egg now yep. um, <laughs> um it does start pretty small though if this is not your experience we would love to hear about your experience because we love hearing from all of our listeners but um i think for most people it just sort of starts as an idea and that's the broadest statement you can possibly make but in fandom specifically it's not just like oh i wonder if i put x character in x thing and it's all very much like little drawing action figures or storyboards and you don't really have much past maybe one or two broad like a a scene action scene or a setting or a world building thing like you would an original story you specifically are watching your tv or reading your books and you go what if 
this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Which is, like, why it's bullshit that Marvel named an entire TV show called What If. Like, fuck fuck off. (laughs) (laughs) Fair enough. Um, One could argue that it's just Disney and... Yeah, I'm going to name the mouse directly in this one. I'm not even going to be obscure about it. They have a tendency to mm. publish their own fan fiction. And oh, it's really? weird. Yeah, they have an entire series of children's novels called, like, uh, Twists in the Tail or something. And it's literally just all for want of a nail fic that they have paid someone to write and publish. It's wild. I. Disney ruining the name of many things, including fan fiction sometimes. My they God. just want to make money off of it. So they're publishing hmm. their own properties. Disney which wants to make money? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Anywho, um, for those of us who are not Disney and do not want to make money off of it, um, I think a mm-hmm. lot of... There, there's kind of a running gag um, in fandom about what exactly it is that made you sit down and write specifically the one that you hear a lot is uh i can't find x fic that i want like or or, this was really good why isn't there more and the joke is well now you have to write it like you've reached the end you've written everything (laughs) in that tag there's nothing else you must be the change you wish to see in the world um (laughs) oh my god uh, it's true though like and then it also sucks when you don't write because mm-hmm. then you're just stuck feeling a yearning for a thing that you cannot create yourself. Oh, my problem is 100% that I'm like, fine, I'll write it. And I start doing it and then I get distracted because that's who I am. And mm. uh, <laughs> then I'll be thinking about it later and I'm like, hmm, what was that one fic? I really enjoyed that. And I'll be oh, oh wait, wait, I'm writing it. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> oh, man. But uh, I've also seen a lot of other ways that people sort of start writing um there's a lot of people who i think they started doing it as a kid for whatever reason i mean wh- why do any does any child do anything and i they think sort ace of, did that ace started writing mm-hmm. as a kid I've, I've heard several people who they started as a kid and it went from there um yep. sometimes they set it down and they're just now picking it back up sometimes they've just been writing the whole time mm-hmm. uh There's definitely people who did it for a while and then it dropped off their radar and then they saw or read or listened to X thing and they're like, whoa, this is so awesome. And they just dive right back in and it's, you know, like riding a bike. Yeah, you you do it. Um, My favorites are the people who, I guess... I would categorize them as they're really passionate about something about their show. Either there was something they loved about the show and they're like, there was not enough. I wanted more of it. Um, I feel like a lot of shippers fall into this category where they're like, look, I loved these characters interactions and I want them to fall in love and I'm going to make it happen. Yes. Uh, But there are also people who watched or read or saw something that, or listened that there was something about it they hated. They hated the ending. They hated the beginning. They hated that these two characters got together, but not these two characters. Yep. Um, and they want to fix it. So they do. Yes. And mm-hmm. sometimes that is the best fic. <laughs> yeah. A lot, it, of, a lot of Avengers fic was that. Mm-hmm. The yeah. passion. Those two, I feel like, yes. people really are passionate <laughs> about something. Great, excellent fic. It's um, perfect. On a little bit pro- more prosaic note, uh, there are also just, I feel like, people who are in the community who there's a challenge um, or there's a prompt or there's something else going on. I mean, there's community bingo um, a lot of times where you're writing almost more as an exercise to write where you've sort of been handed a topic and you have to go. And Yeah, and, and big bangs and all mm-hmm. of that jazz. Yeah. There's also fan art. Like, I cannot begin to explain the glorious relationship between fic and fan art in which one prompts the other round and round in a circle. Um, (laughs) It's really (laughs) lovely. The number of things that the author's like, Oh, I was super inspired by X piece of fan art. So I wrote a thing. And then somebody else goes, Oh, I read this really great fic. So I made a comic out of it. And you know, it, it's really nice because then you 
you get bo- the best of both worlds, in my opinion. Yeah, you do. And so it's what's fun, too, is when somebody puts a fan art out there that is not involved in any fic. Like, it's not because of a fic. And then, a f- like, multiple fics sprout up because of that fan art. Mm-hmm. Like, that's really fun. A lot of fan art that you find, I don't know, at least the fan art that I see are because of a fic and then I go read that fic but then there are there's just random fan art that exists obviously and then a lot of fic happens because of that one image that's so fun to me like it's just nice you know you're adding to the community and because of that you're getting a bunch of other stuff in the community you want another fic like the fic you like and it doesn't Mm -hmm. exist Oh, it's, uh, it's so sad when that happens because it's the only one mm-hmm. <laughs> that you can find. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to refer to a term that we haven't used in a long time and I picked up from another wonderful podcast. Um, but it's the, the fishbowling effect where you've yeah, reached the end. That. There is nothing else. This 100% applies where you have looked at everything in that tag or under that relationship and you just there's sometimes if it's really small that entire fandom and there's nothing else i just have experienced that i have just experienced that and i I am i am not the fish who makes another fishbowl i am the fish who just stares at oneself in sadness and defeat (laughs) (laughs) your your little paw keeps scraping at the bottom like maybe there's another fish in here maybe but there isn't (laughs) There is not. <laughs> oh, man. So I'm sure there are hundreds and hundreds of more ways that people can sort of get that spark to create. But let's say that that has happened now. What is the next step in this life cycle? Uh, for most people, it is staring dauntingly at either a empty Word document or a blank page. I think more Word document than page these days. And sort of it, it stares back at them. Yeah, this is, I think, the most personal part of it. Uh, everybody's writing process is different. I'm sure there are some people who just sit down and write. And it's just there on the page from head to pen to paper. You know, real, And it's glorious and wonderful. And those people are amazing. And I have no idea how they do it. Um, same. Literally same. So I'm going to pull in some really technical uh, writing terms here. And say that those people are pantsers um, for a certain <laughs> degree of it. Uh, pantser is based on the phrase to fly by the seat of your pants. It's basically people <laughs> who just sort of sit down and ha- things happen. And if they need to straighten it out, they'll do it after the fact. Like plot will happen organically. And they can be amazing writers. Um, if anybody yes, has can. ever read the mystery novel, The Westinghouse Game, uh, according to friends of the author, that was completely pantsed. Like the mystery just happened and it, and she revised the draft and it was done. Um, I am for better and for worse. I would love to be a pantser, but I am not, I am a plotter. And I feel like there is a community of definitely plotters out there. What we do is we make outlines and we make, we do research and we fill out character sheets and we have playlists for our characters that we carefully select and we build maps and you name it uh, uh, the opposite of a pantser is a plotter plotters will probably have something to try and pin down the idea and like flesh it out and before they ever get to paper the downside to being a plotter uh is Uh sometimes you get a little bit tied up in all of the pre-writing writing writing. And sometimes things don't actually end up on the page. So, yeah, longer process. Yeah. Being a beta for somebody who's a plotter is actually really fun because you can help create the plot a lot more than somebody who's just writing and writing and writing and writing, writing, you know? (laughs) But Mm -hmm. um, uh, it just takes longer. And that's okay. Mm -hmm. I think I I would much rather have a, a really, really good fic that is incredibly well crafted, but it takes a couple years to write. Then, mm-hmm. um, uh, fly by the seat of your pants fic that was just kind of word vomited on the page, and and you know the whether it's good or not kind of doesn't matter. I like when it's well crafted when you can mm-hmm. tell somebody put a lot of time and thought into it. Um, 
But, I, you know, fly by the seat of your pants is still great because you can just do it in like a couple weeks and it's done. <laughs> Which is amazing. <laughs> but, um, yeah. And yeah. There, there are benefits to both. I think a good writer is a little bit of both. Um, they have a tendency to plot enough that it all hangs together, but they let it grow organically. So there's one, actually words on a page. And two, so that you're listening to what your characters want, um, which is especially important in fic, I think, because most of the characters you're working with are probably not going to be your characters exclusively. They have to be some version of your canonical characters that people have to agree are the canonical characters. Like you can't, you can't just have Professor X walking around for no reason just because you want it to be that way. You actually have to have a reasoning behind it and, you know, rationale. You also can't have him just be merciless murderer of some kind without at least putting some kind of a tag that explains that, hey, this is wildly AU. And even then, you still have to agree with some parts of his character. It, it's a ship of Theseus sort of an argument. Um, how much of this character can we remove and still have the character? <laughs> Yeah. Well, okay. There was this thing where it was like, I saw it on Tumblr. It was so, somebody, somebody went to a seemingly incredibly old, um, like Hindu temple, Buddha, Buddhist temple. I know they are completely different <laughs> religions. Um, it was a temple Probably of some cult sort. Culturally Indian? No, I don't know. It, I, it was Asian. <laughs> okay. it was asian of some sort then you're, um, it was, you're, you're not helping they could be either <laughs> <laughs> i know <laughs> but somebody went there and was like speaking to somebody who you know was uh, a, a person at the place and um and was like wow i can't believe that this place is so well preserved from like 1323 years or whatever whenever it was built the sign said and mm -hmm. and they were like oh well it was built around 200 years ago because there was a fire and the person was like, so it's actually only 200 years old. And they're like, no, it's the same temple. And it's just like, what? <laughs> like, <laughs> Americans don't think that way. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But but no, it's the same thought. It's the same concept. The building was built exactly the same way as it was before the fire. So it's like, yeah, I guess it is the same building. You know? Mm -hmm. it's it's people still think of it as that and i guess that's the most important aspect of a thing of a meaning and if that could also be the most important aspect of a character no i'm intending for that character be, to be the same but mm -hmm. now they are a magical fire fairy in an au you know like mm -hmm. <laughs> but it's still bucky you know <laughs> like <laughs> yeah it, which and, and ship of theseus gets fucked you know <laughs> Which is a whole episode in and of itself. Where where yes, does the yes. lines lie? But yeah, <laughs> regardless, where do they? Um, you have now written something. Be it good, be it bad, be it long, be it short. You have put the thing on the page. What do you do now? Generally speaking, there are only really three things you can do. Number one, you can send it to an editor or a beta, or just work through the drafting process on your own. I guess. Um, basically, you sit down and you go, okay, I need to fix all my typos and um, clean up the plot and dialogue and make it snappy and all the fun things that, you know, professional writers do. A long, tiring, exhausting, frustrating process. Betas help, I will say. Oh, yes, I, so much. Betas really help with that. <laughs> Option number two, you can take your life in your hands and post it as is. Your oh, work God. is perfection. It is only 300 words long. All of them are exactly how you want them to be. There is not a single problem. You have put it out as the most perfect fic that has ever existed. Um, oh, you are braver than most of us. <laughs> <laughs> or, to be completely honest, knowing some of them, just very, very drunk at 3 a.m. Both or, are options. Or 13 years old. <laughs> That's almost like being drunk at 3 a.m. <laughs> yes, it is. Continuously, all the time. But I think with more yeah. anger. I think most 13-year-olds are just perpetually in a state of anger. Or uh, emotional anxiety or, anxiety. or both. Or anxiety. Or both. Yeah. I was the anxiety girl. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Those were the days. Option number three. 
Uh, you have written it, you love it, you treasure it, and you're never sharing it with anybody else ever again. It has become drawerific. You can put it away safely somewhere and s your descendants will find it and be very confused or will publish it to great acclaim. Either way. Uh, um, imagine imagine all of that drawerific out there. Oh, there mm -hmm. must be like 100,000 fics out there in drawers or, you know, in a file on a computer. Mm -hmm. that nobody will ever read. And that makes me sad. Yes anyway. and no. Knowing what is out there, uh, there's going to be a decent portion of it that probably shouldn't see the light of day, and that's fine, oh, too. Oh, yeah. 100%. <laughs> but there's a decent portion of it, inherently, that I would like to read. It's just kind of mm -hmm. sad. Okay. So, you decide to contact me. <laughs> mm -hmm. A beta. <laughs> And you need somebody to help you with your fic. Um, please go to our beta episode to listen to what a beta is. If you're confused about what a beta is, um, they are incredibly important uh, <laughs> to the ecosystem of fan fiction, in my opinion. Not just because I'm a beta, but like I I've seen it. I've seen it work out real well for a lot of people. Um, but to recap the episode, basically... A lot of the people who are betas tend to be friends of the authors, like, even before the fic was written. Or, in my case, in, in a lot of instances, I have become friends of people who I end up betaing for. Which, uh, that's fun. Uh, it also tends to be people who are fellow fandom members and also tend to be writers, too. Um, they both write together and they both et uh, beta for each other. Uh, also, betas are editors. I need to put that out there. <laughs> I didn't say that at the beginning. Betas are editors. Um, sometimes family reads your fic. Really, though? Does family read fic a whole lot? I'm going to put out there that it happens, especially when it you're 13 does. years old. Or yes. your family is already in fandom. But again, braver than most of us. Yeah, I will that's also say not that normal. <laughs> Uh, it's way more likely that you, if you are, it's going to be a cousin of some flavor True. than a sibling or a parent you have to live with, um, or even True. one that you have lived with in the past. Because there's there are parts of fic that are very revealing, I think, about who you are as a person and what you enjoy hmm. that can be kind of hard to reveal to people who you have shared a lot of time and space with because they probably have a perception of you, especially if they knew you as a kid, that you're like, I don't really want to step on that. Um, that's yeah. many years of refined relationship right there. Uh, that maybe if you have a, a cousin or an aunt or an uncle or something, especially someone closer in age to you, uh, you're probably a little bit more free with because ultimately, if you have to cut off contact for some reason, it's not as big of a deal. And also because how much more does their opinion matter? I don't know. It's easier to form certain communities with certain kinds of people, which is a deep and philosophical discussion for another time. <laughs> Again. I love how, I love getting into deep and philosophical <clears throat> discussions on this podcast. <laughs> the main point being, if you're sharing it with family, you are way braver than most of us. Or a lot stupid. Definitely. Or you're young. Which does not mean stupid, it just means inexperienced. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Uh, writers groups are actually also a good place to go to uh, if you ha feel really comfortable in a group of people say you're in college and you are getting an English degree like we did uh, and there's a group of people that you are you write with or write essays with uh, pretty continuously at your local coffee shop that might be a good place for you to ask hey is anybody willing to read my fic because they probably also all write fic or read fic and those would be good people to ask and also writers groups do exist online too. So go and insert yourself into a writers group, become friends with them, and then ask them to read your fic. Uh, and then also there are beta communities. There is actually a Reddit thread for people uh, who like to put out that they are a beta or that they need a beta. And you can really find some great friends on there, I've heard. Um, just be careful uh, j just to make sure that the people who you get the person you get if you need a beta or the person that you get if you are a beta, make sure that the editing and writing styles match mm -hmm. because 
Um, if they don't match, then it can be d- a difficult process. And this is just a fun thing people like to do. So mm-hmm. don't make it not fun. <laughs> Um, yeah, yeah. It, be careful. Again, listen to our beta episode. We go on a lot more about this. We do. We really do. And it was super fun. And this season, we're going to be talking about betas, but the other kind in a different episode. And that's going to be mm-hmm. fun. Anyway, this whole process of getting things better. Like once for me, when I was writing essays, getting everything on the page was the hardest part. And editing was the easiest. But... When you are writing for a story for people you don't know, and you're not getting graded on it or anything, you're not really, you don't even know if you're going to get any feedback. The, the getting it good enough for you personally to publish it, I've heard is kind of tedious and hard, but also, um, obviously people wouldn't be doing it if it didn't, if it wasn't like there wasn't a certain amount of self-satisfaction. So uh, it's also a good thing, right? Mm-hmm. I'm also going to point out that it is to a certain extent a matter of scale. Um, no matter how mm. much you like editing, especially a paper, because you're making it all neat and tidy, squaring the corners, making it pretty. Um, when you're trying to do the same thing for something that's 100K, it just takes time and energy like hours and hours and hours of your time even if you're just doing it a chapter at a time so it's fun but it's hard um yeah as it's most fun, but crafts it's are uh okay so you published it and i i'm gonna say that it's really easy really easy to just go you published it the <laughs> truth of the matter is um it's a little harder than that um most people do not do print publishing anymore for for fic for a lot Sadly. of very very good reasons and Sadly, i'm going to just say here that print is a whole level of crazy because you have to typeset things and you have to understand your physical medium and so in addition to all of the like little funky text things that you have to make sure are right there's like a whole level of design there that i don't think most of us have or really want to have or if you do you don't use it in this particular instance um it's sort of an extra mile thing but even taking that out different platforms have different means of publishing that can be kind of confusing like they make a lot of sense when you understand how they work but at least initially they're they're it's not as easy as just copying and pasting from your word document um in particular, I feel it's worth noting AO3, the way their publishing works is they you actually have to put it in, in a coding language. Um, you have to put it, I believe, in HTML in order to get it to look right. Because if you just copy and paste it directly in, in it will just become one giant word blob. Um, so you don't necessarily need to know how to HTML code almost at all. Uh, if even if you want to do it by hand, which most people don't. There are other ways to go about it. But I I know some people who that very much caught them uh, blindside, where they were trying to publish something, and they're like, why is it not working? It's because there is some coding involved in order to get it the way you want. Um, If you want it to be super fancy, I believe you can also do some CSS coding. uh, And coders out there are going to be like, why are you saying these words in this way? But... uh, (laughs) You can do other fancy things, which is, I think, why they chose to do it that way, because it's very adaptable and you, the author, can make things exactly how you want them in terms of uh, your italics and your fonts and your paragraph breaks and, and so on. And it will look good across a lot of different platforms because of that, and it makes encoding on their end easier. But again, it's not just copying and pasting. I don't know as much about fanfiction.net, partly because it is an older site and partly because I am not as familiar with it in general, but I do know that there is probably some for, like, there's probably some formatting involved that they're specific about when you do publish. Um, it could be argued that in that way, Tumblr's a little bit easier, although it is not a great platform for fic, in that I think you can sort of compose posts fairly easily. Um, now, of course, you can't really link them together. So if you've got a chaptered thing, that's crazy. 
Uh, and mm-hmm. I don't know how exactly Live Journal worked, but point being, you should do at least a little bit of research before you publish to make sure that you will get it published the way you want it to. Um, because it's pretty easy to do it not the way you want it to. <laughs> it is uh, seemingly full of little minds. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, it's sort of like typos. It's super frustrating and embarrassing when you've put in all of this work and effort to to create the thing. Yeah. And then you just miss one broken bracket or something and the whole thing looks like garbage. Okay, but you have gone through the rigmarole of not only writing it and betaing it if you did that, and then also got it to get published the way you want it. Now it's published. Mm-hmm. What happens next? <laughs> uh, some people online have been talking about like algorithms on AO3. Not sure what um, that is. Well,. Oh, so, mm, no. I'm going to object right there. Anything that has to do with <laughs> algorithms on AO3, I'm going to object to in principle. <laughs> it's not real, guys, okay? The algorithms on AO3 can't hurt you. But a lot of younger people have been commenting on Tumblr like, why is it that my, my fic goes out onto AO3 and nobody's watching it? Why aren't the algorithms throwing my fic up to people? And it's because like, there um, aren't any. There are none. <laughs> what are you talking about? Uh, basically, the the AO3 is you curate your experience kind of website, which is f- very fastly, very quickly becoming something that doesn't exist on the internet anymore, which is so sad. Mm-hmm. But that means that if your fic is out there and, you know, it's new, it's not going to, there's not going to be a burst of activity with it immediately. It's going to take some time. Mm-hmm. Uh, unless you have like a bunch of friends who are gonna like put it out everywhere, you know, and even then that's not not a sure mm-hmm. thing. Uh, so hopefully people do find it and they do read it and they do comment on it and they do review it and they do like it and they do share it, you know, but so that doesn't happen sometimes. I just wanted to put that out there though. Mm-hmm. There is no algorithm on AO3 and that's okay. It- I'm sorry that that is making it people or that's making it harder for people to like get views or li- readings on their their fic but i don't know what do you think be so it's worth noting here that ao3 and fanfiction.net specifically are not social media sites they are very much not there's a social aspect to it there's comments there's a community but it's not a social media site it's an archiving site Meaning it's there to keep things safe and neat and tidy where you can get them and love them. It is not there for you to have a stream or for it to recommend things to you. It's not going to learn things about you because of what you read. It's there for you to read what you like. If you want more recommendations and things like that, either you can go to, to things like collections that are built by people for that purpose. Or you can go to other social media. Um, that I know, although I'm not on the platform, that there is a whole side of TikTok that just is about, you know, wrecking for specific fandoms. And here's a fic that I found. And here's ones that I like. Yes, we didn't ask you. And Tumblr is very much like that, where if people like it, they'll wreck it. There are a whole wreck lists that they have put together. Yes. So it... It's worth noting that you've published it, you've put it out there, but you've put it on an archive. Meaning, if you want to get a signal boost, you have to put it on a social media site, which is different. Um, The archive is there so people have access to it in an easy, convenient way. Um, And so that it hopefully stays there as long as you want it to be up. So that you don't have to worry about the site going down. As long as you want it to be up. Mm Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So now that theoretically people have read it and liked it, um, hopefully people are being kind and are giving you some comments um, because as a lot of fake writers (laughs) have put out there, comments are sort of the lifeblood of 
fic writers, it's why a lot of people continue doing what they do because that first spark can get you all the way to publishing. But if you just sort of throw it out there into the void and, and you never hear anything back, it's disappointing because you really loved this thing and you put it yeah. out there for other people to enjoy. And to the best of your ability, you can't tell. Like maybe there's a whole bunch of kudos, but if nobody commented, you're like, so did you like it or did you? only kind of like it like what did you like about it should i write another one no this is perfect <laughs> i should never touch a word document again artists need feedback mm -hmm. like any artist needs feedback there's like it's just part of doing art is a community thing in my opinion you're doing it not only for yourself you want other people to experience it with you and in order to have other people experience it with the author on AO3, people need to comment. And that that's good. It's a good thing. You should comment. As long as, as you feel like you can say something, then mm -hmm. say it. Don't we're gonna don't do constructive criticism. <laughs> so as a general rule. <laughs> that leads us to a brief caveat that like many other things we've already talked about, is sort of an episode in and of itself. So I'm not gonna go super yeah. deep into it here. But suffice to say, there has been, since to my knowledge, the inception of fandom as we know it, a debate about both what uh, constructive criticism is and whether or not it should be given. I don't think that there's a particularly good answer I can give to anybody on this particular topic, but I will yeah. warn you that different people and different communities have different views on it. Yes. And... As a general rule, don't one should ask if it is something that people want before trying to give it. And even if they say yes, please be kind. Um, yes. Because again, this is people doing it for fun. And there's nothing fun about people coming in and sort of trash talking something they've put a lot of work and heart into. So yeah. even if you've got a problem with it, try and be kind. I would actually say... Just as a general rule, think about not doing it. If you've thought about doing it, think about not doing it at the same time. Let's just let's just put that out there. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a whole episode worth of content just on yeah. that particular topic. <laughs> know that it's uh controversial. It's not liked. It's really controversial. Like incredibly controversial. It's a debate that will probably never be finished or probably decided not. About. Yeah. Um, because everybody's a critic is just like a, a mm -hmm. word. It's a phrase people use. <clears throat> Squidward does. And don't, you don't have to be critical about something that somebody has created for free for you online. <laughs> mm -hmm. And if you don't like it, you don't have to read it. You can just leave. It's okay. And too. you don't have to comment that you don't like it. Mm -hmm. If you do like it, please comment. Please go ahead and comment. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. even if it's just a key smash, even if it's, oh my god, I really love that. Just a little bit, like, just a little thing like that can make somebody really want to write another thing for, mm -hmm. for their audience. And that's a really good thing, right? We want more fic. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, so, I feel like we've, we've reached what I think most people think of as the end of the life cycle. Um, True. That you've created, you, you've had your idea, you've created something, you've worked with it, it's now published and exists. We're at the, we're at the has a career adult frog mm -hmm. portion of this. And this is where most people intersect with a work, I think. Um, yeah. But it, technically speaking, isn't the end. Um, there are kind nope. of two, um, there, there is the end of the fic. Um, fic do not last forever. Uh, as much as we would like some of them to. Um, yeah. The and frog does die eventually. There, <laughs> there are a couple of different ways that they sort of end their lives. Um, in the more final sense, they can be lost. They can, uh, sites can go down. People can uh, delete them. Um, and they're just sort of gone forever. Or as gone forever as anything on the internet ever is. Uh, some of the she's very gone. Uh, <clears throat> that's sort of the sad ending, I guess. Um, there are a lot of fics that I think fall into this category of just sort of disappeared. Uh, 
but there are so like i said ao3 is an archiving site but it's one that it's voluntary so if the author doesn't like something they are 100 percent able to take it down um or they can abandon it or they can orphan it which are all different things uh at the top of the list the one that is the less least frustrating i guess to a lot of uh fic readers who enjoy the things that they see is abandoning which is essentially an author is writing in a story they get to some point and for whatever reason they decide they can no longer write it or don't want to write it and sometimes they put a note sometimes they don't Uh, i mean if something hasn't been written on since 2007 you have a pretty good idea that it's been abandoned um and it just sort of lives there by itself the author just stops writing but you can still have it and keep it and love it if you want um it doesn't really go anywhere until such a time as i guess ao3 dies or whatever site it's on dies uh hopefully ao3 steals whatever it is content that is before it the a different site dies but neither here nor there after that one you have orphaning which this can be done to works in progress completed works whatever works you want it's sort of like a post writing um making it anonymous because there is a function on ao3 where you can write things anonymously um this is like if you wrote a thing and then you decided that you don't actually want anything more to do with it but you don't want to just get rid of it either um it's a step beyond abandoning and it's called orphaning i don't know of any other sites that really have this feature other than ao3 but essentially it is an author sort of washing their hands of it and it gets sent to what's called an orphan account um on ao3 where it still exists in all its glory but the author can no longer write on it and it's no longer associated with them it's just a work that exists um this can be done either for individual works or authors can sometimes orphan their whole account like it's a way of them leaving i'm not coming back to this account or this name um and then it becomes an orphan account and everything in that case is still associated with their original username but obviously the account is orphaned so there will be no more writing that's just sad when that happens but also it's it's understandable Mm -hmm. There are a lot of different reasons why people either leave or don't want to be associated with a work anymore. And that's true. That's a thing. It makes a lot of sense sometimes. And it's a good feature to have. It does tend to happen almost inevitably when somebody becomes like an actual author, like a published author, Mm -hmm. not an actual author. People who write fic are also authors. That's dumb. Yes. But like, like people who become published Mm -hmm. authors tend to abandon their past works a lot. depending on how con- closely connected they were to a particular username yeah. and account. Um, yeah. If they were 100% anonymous, then nobody can tell. Uh, That's true. <laughs> it also happens a lot, I, I see, with young writers, where they write a whole bunch when they're kids, and then they kind of look back at it as they grow older, and they're like, oh, gross, did not enjoy that, yeah. do not want to be associated. And so that they go ahead right. and orphan them. Yeah. Um, uh, and finally, there is deleting. So... Deleting is exactly like what it sounds like. It is an author or in some cases in some communities, a moderator or someone else going through and getting rid of a fic. Uh, They just delete the whole thing. That's the saddest one because Mm -hmm. it was out there and now it is gone. And if somebody did not take the time to download it, then it's gone forever. And Mm -hmm. it's not like it's a published book that you know, you could go out and buy on a bookshelf, you know, you lost your copy. No, it is, it is mm-hmm. a piece of, of art that nobody will ever be able to read again. And that to me is just like, it's like a painting being burned. Mm-hmm. You know, it's so sad. A, a lot of people. really important to a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people are really frustrated, I think, by this one, because, by deleting work, you are basically saying, not only do I want nothing to do with it ever again, <clears throat> I don't want anybody else reading it again, even if they really enjoy it. And that's the author's right to do that. I'm not going to quibble one way or the other. But um, 
it should be known that there are ways, a la downloading fic, that you can either keep what you really like safe or there are people who continue to distribute it, which is not great etiquette. Uh, again, different communities have different rules and different opinions on it, but a good rule of thumb is to a certain extent, it is the author's choice whether or not their fic exists. So even if you really, really love it, you probably shouldn't be passing around deleted fic um, because obviously the author has made their intentions known that they do not wish other people to read it. So, you know, it, keep it to yourself. It's, yeah. uh, it's a difficult, it, it puts readers in a little bit of a sticky situation sometimes, but again, there's something comforting knowing that if you put a fic out there and you don't like it or you think it was a mistake or sometimes there's a lot of controversy that gets stirred up and you kind of get stuck in the middle, you have the option of taking it down and removing yourself from that. So there are pros, there are cons. It's really tragic, but there are some good reasons to continue to be able to do it, especially yeah. there are a lot of ways to get your hands on fic that do not officially exist anymore. Um, and I think it's important that people remember the etiquette of it, which is if other people do the homework and hunt it down and get it, okay. But you probably shouldn't be passing it around like your communities and stuff um, because it officially no longer exists. It's complicated. It's hard, especially because I am a huge proponent of archiving, like a, a more permanent form of archiving. Yeah. I mean, it happened. It existed. People read it. Mm -hmm. It should be out there and available for people to read it in the future, mm -hmm. which is why archiving exists. Yes. Uh, um, yeah. To end quickly on a little bit of a happier note, um, there is a fourth option, sort of. Mm, um, kind of. And that's adopting a work. So sometimes an author will abandon a work um, and... This can only be done if the author doesn't orphan it or otherwise sort of make it anonymous. Um, but they can say, hey, I'm not going to work on this story anymore. But if anybody else wants to, I will go ahead and uh, give them permission to go to do that. And this one's a little bit weird. You see it a little bit more on fanfiction.net than you do on AO3 strictly. But it does happen. And it's interesting because... A lot of writers are of two minds. The, okay, I'm adopting the idea and making it my own, and I'm going to start over and write a new fic with this same base premise and even some ways the same fic. And some people who are like, okay, so go read this person's first, and then my story will pick up from where theirs left off. Both of which are really interesting, and they're not, they're sort of the end and the beginning. It's, it's, we're looping back to the beginning here. Yeah, it's the end and the beginning, and that's fun, because now we're mm -hmm. at the tadpole of the frog again. Mm -hmm. Which... It's... Fan fiction is reincarnation. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm, or, you know, they have offspring, which they do. Um, that's one of the fun things about fic, is you actually do get... Um, fic becomes that spark that creates more fic. Um, so you do actually get the beginning of the light si life cycle all over um, where you get things like fic of a fic or AU of an AU, sometimes even by the same author. I've definitely read authors who went, oh, I wrote this story and now I'm writing an AU of that story that I wrote, which is at least vaguely hilarious to me. They yeah. were like, okay, yeah, I had an idea, absolutely. and I went and followed through on the idea, but also I had another idea. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that can that goes off into lots of other things. Like, this was inspired by this fic that I read. Mm -hmm. um, and what's funny about that is when you read that, and then you're like, oh, I wonder what that fic was like. And then that is a deleted work. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. Like, it's like the... the <clears throat> The flowers that are shaped like the bees that don't exist anymore mm -hmm. in our in our world. It's like, oh my god, what shape? How did this shape of this fic happen? Because we'll never know from the deleted work. Anyway, mm -hmm. um, and then other people will also like build off of that work with the series, uh, a continuation that happens, mm -hmm. continuations happen. 
and then <clears throat> uh, wrecking. Mm -hmm. It's a huge part of the life cycle. Please wreck people's fix. Oh, yeah. Just wrecking, wrecking in general. Absolutely. Like, that's what we try to do as much as possible. We have a red corner for a lot of our mm -hmm. episodes. And we try to share the love of audience, right? As much as possible with, with fic that we really love. So, yeah. I mean, adding to, to bookmark collections on AO3 and wrecking and sharing links with your friends, like, that's important. That's really important to to continuing the, the, the love of fic in the mm -hmm. world. We've already kind of talked about archiving a bit. Mm -hmm. We but, have uh, a little bit of an episode episodes. on it. Yeah, we have some episodes, specifically one about zines. And then mm -hmm. we also happen to have an episode, a short episode about the Open Doors Project from AO3. Mm -hmm. uh, transformative works. And uh, we also actually have, um, well, we have an episode about fan craft. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, I think we did talk about fan binding a bit in mm -hmm. that we did. episode. We did. Okay, good. Um, but uh, go and search more about fan binding if you want. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's also somewhat controversial and yes. see the above for um, the etiquette on how to deal with author's works. And I'm not just talking about deleted ones. I'm talking about like they're still out there present in fandom. Please ask before you do any serious archiving that's not just for your personal use. Please, please, please. Um, yes. But... Like, don't give away – if you happen to have, a, like, a printing press at your disposal, which a lot of people don't. But if you happen to have that, don't just, like, you know, create, like, 300 copies of a specific thing and then just hand them out. That's – that's – no. That's stealing at that point. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, be, a, be careful with that. We don't want to ruin everybody's fun, at, mm -hmm. you know. Because it's stealing not only from the author, but it's also kind of getting into that weird zone of you're kind of stealing from the people who have the IP. Mm -hmm. like, it's rough. It puts you in a legally tenuous position. It does. And don't do that. Okay? Mm -hmm. Don't put yourself in that legally tenuous position. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And don't, don't put us in that position either by doing mm -hmm. that inadvertently. <laughs> We don't want to put more fire on the AO3 lawyer team. Okay? Yeah. We like them. We want mm -hmm. them to stick around. We don't want them to burn. Um, but yeah. Okay. So, so disappearing, though. Yeah. Not to end this on a downer note, but yeah. it is worth noting that for the most part, if you look statistically over time, think about how many fics you have ever read from the 90s. Ever. Probably not very many, unless we are getting Maybe. some really lovely elders in our listening community, in which case I bow to you. Thank you so much for your uh, <laughs> community building activities. But for the majority of us, I don't think we can say that we've read a whole lot of yeah, I've only, I've only read like that are three. more than 20 years old. If you do, though, get into Spurk. <laughs> if, you do want, if you do want to get into Fic... If you do want to get into fic that's older, then then actually read read Spurk because it's easier to find zines specifically about Star Trek. It, since most of us haven't read things that are that old, it's probably worth noting that it's fairly unlikely that your fic is going to last a super long time. Unless you True. or a friend or a really big fan makes a concerted effort to preserve your work you can probably assume that it's going to disappear at some point. Uh, I guess the other notable exception is if you somehow manage to remain at the top of your very, very large fandoms fic list for a lot of years, then, you know, there's a reasonable chance of people finding a way to save or preserve the work. But I don't think that's most of us. Um, so just keep that in mind when you put it out there that if you love it, keep it safe because the internet is not going to do that for you no it is not uh okay that is the end of the life cycle of a fic mm -hmm. we will be doing this season the life cycle of a whole fandom which is way different the con the concepts the conceptualization of that is way different than what we just described with fic um because 
they can continue on living they can die they mm-hmm. can become something that they weren't before they, they can oh, resurrect which is very creepy they, that's creepy as hell zombie fandoms <laughs> <laughs> okay sometimes yes sometimes no they also like sometimes have cousins or offspring i mean i would yeah. not the star trek fandom never really died but in its own no. weird way the original series fandom had a weird illegitimate child in the alternate original series fandom it's yes. all very odd because they're sort it's of all, all the same fun. it's so great we're gonna be talking about that in an episode sometime this this season um but now it's time for rat corner oh i'm so happy mm-hmm. you got to say that <laughs> Okay, so I'll go first. Um, my fic uh, to wreck this week is The Bard at the Window by Flake Blood. Uh, it is a Witcher fic. And it is... So, so Jaskier is uh, basically in this kind of magical curse house thing where he is... It's kind of a tangle to you. Let's just put it out there. It's a little bit of a tangled AU, but it's more of like, a, there's more magic involved. It's not just physical keeping him up, kind of. Um, he is up in this tower, and the only person he really talks to throughout the fic is Geralt. Uh, and it is really cute. It was just finished. I haven't actually read the the ending because it was just finished. Um, just completed. Um, but uh, I'm sure it's really good because the author is, is pretty good at what they do. So go ahead and read that. It's very sweet. Um, it's just Jaskier at his best. He's a little bard and he's doing his work as a bard and he's trying to be, you know, uh, high energy, but he's stuck in this goddamn tower <laughs> for years. <laughs> uh, it's very, really cute. Go ahead and read it. Mm-hmm. And you've definitely sold me. I am super excited to read that. <laughs> <laughs> it's really, really adorable. <laughs> so I am going to do a slight departure from my usual wrecks, and I'm going to wreck a fic called Death at the Warney by Miss Lillian. It is in the Miss Fisher's Murder Mysteries fandom, which is a very weird fandom to be in, but there we are. Um, no shade thrown on anyone else who's in here, uh, because, well... I should not cast stones at glass houses. Um, (laughs) It is a case fic, um, pretty uncomplicatedly so. It's sort of, it's a soft AU where things are mostly the same, but it's a little bit ambiguously post-canon. And it is uh, Inspector Jack Robinson and Miss Fisher investigating the murder of a cyclist on the King's Highway. um, And they discover that he is um was training to uh run to do a bicycle race between um i believe it's melbourne and warnambool which is where the term warning comes from and it is a very long very hard race and uh jack robinson just happens to be a very good cyclist so he ends up getting stuck trying to figure out the mystery while also participating in the race it is a very sweet, pretty quick read. Um, it's finished. So if you ever want something that's sort of uncomplicated um, and for once heterosexual, I would 100% recommend. Yeah, I asked for this link because I really want to read it because I really like Mrs. Uh, Fisher's Murders Mysteries or Miss, mm-hmm. Miss, sorry, she's not married. Um, spoiler alert, she's not married. <laughs> Miss Fisher. Yeah, that's a spoiler because uh, in the first episode, she explains how she's never getting married. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a good show. And I would say the fic is easy to get into, even if you don't really know the show, actually. Mm-hmm. If you like the show, you'll like the fic. They happen to be very close. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, that was fun. Mm -hmm. Thank you for listening to the second episode of season three. Woo! Uh, I guess we'll see y'all next time on Fangirls Anonymous. Bye!